Hi, I'm Gwem and welcome to the Gwembassy. So I've noticed that quite a few of my viewers aren't subscribed, it's about 50-50. So if you're into this stuff, it would give my motivation a boost if you hit the subscribe button, but don't worry if, you know, you don't feel like doing that. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago when I was editing the video for the Acid Box Special, I'd done basically a whole section dedicated to the Behringer TD3MO, but it was really long, in fact it was about half of the video, so what I did was to extract that section and make this video which you can watch now, so it details all the features and controls of the Behringer TD3MO. I hope you enjoy. What I should do now is talk about everything that this can do. So I'm going to turn off the original and just talk about the TD3MO. So as a tuning knob, that's pretty clear. Then it has cutoff and resonance for the filter. Now the resonance is a bit, sounds a little different to the TB303. It goes it goes higher and the cutoff has more range so the cutoff will go much lower i mean you can get the cutoff so low that it cuts off the sound in fact like the first fifth of the control is kind of useless actually on the mo but the cutoff will go higher uh, there are other controls to increase the resonance even more we'll get into those. This is called envelope here on the Behringer. It's um, the amount of modulation the envelope has. You can hear that the, uh, here it's relatively flat. The more you turn it up, the more, um, the more effect the envelope's having. Um, this definitely has more range than the original um, TB303. What they've done with the decay when I first started playing around with this really puzzled me. But now I really like it. So there's actually three decay controls on this. Three. The first one here is a decay control for the amplitude. It only affects the volume. <laughs> You can make these very short pulses, which isn't possible on an original TB303. And on maximum, it never really kind of fades out. If you have the knob kind of around 11 o'clock, it's a lot like an original TB303, basically. So the first decay only affects the volume. Then we have the accent control, which as we've already discussed, it, it has more of an impact. There's something called soft attack. It's not really like a full attack on an ASDR envelope, um, but it <laughs> literally softens the initial transient of the note. Let's get an attacky sound. Right, so clearly the, that a sound has a lot of attack, so let's bring in the soft attack. And it just tames it a little bit. Then we have two more decay controls. These are filter decay controls. One of them is a decay for normal notes, and one of them is a decay for accented notes. And the easiest way to hear the difference is if I add a bit of overdrive. So listen to the decay of the filter. I'm going to adjust normal notes, not accented notes first. So you can hear normal notes are being changed, but the accented notes are staying as they are. This is actually really cool. I like to tune the accented notes to get, to get a sort of punch. It's really nice for tweaking that accent. The accent's very important on the MO because you've got so much more range with it. Yeah, 
it means you can get that hard floor accent or I IQ records kind of accent. That shows very nicely why you want three decay controls. <laughs> one for the volume, two for the filter, one for normal notes and one for accented notes. It really allows you to tune it when you've got all the when you're running with loads of overdrive. This thing also has filter tracking, which is honestly a bit weird. Um, it's not quite like filter tracking on like an SH-101. What it does do is create like a different sort of effect. It sounds kind of quacky. What it's doing is reducing the amount of filter on the lower notes and increasing it quite a lot on the upper notes. That's with full filter tracking. That's without filter tracking. It gives nice movement. Uh, as I say, it's not really like a filter tracking control on like an SH-101, but it is cool. The last control on the top row is overdrive, and this is way better than the the basic um, TD3. So the TD3 you buy without the MO on it, it has like a built-in distortion, but I don't think it sounds very good. I think the basic TD3 is great, but I really didn't like the distortion circuit they put in. Now, the one on this is the same as the Devilfish one, and what it does is it overdrives the filter and it sounds absolutely great. So we've got plain sound, and I'm going to turn up the overdrive. Sounds so much warmer and more organic. So that's the top row of controls. Now I'm going to go and talk about the next row. This thing has a sub oscillator built in, which is which is a really good sounding sub oscillator as well. Let me bring in the sub oscillator. So the sub oscillator's on now. It's on low though. I can use this switch here to go from low, mid to high. And definitely hear it on high. Makes it sound way more chunky, and when you add overdrive, you get like a really fat growl. Then you've got a tempo control, which is just like a 303, and then you have the wave selector. Just like a 303, you can go from sawtooth to square wave. Square wave. Square wave sounds really good. That's something they get wrong on 303 clones sometimes. That's sawtooth. But you have a third option, which is to completely turn off the waveform and have nothing. Why would you do that? There's a couple of reasons. Firstly, you can still enable the sub oscillator. So that's just the sub -op, um, oscillator. You can also get the filter to self resonate, which I'll get to later, but just quickly. That's just the filter self resonating without any oscillator of any sort. So it kind of gives you more options having that. What do we have then is the pattern group selected just like the original. Then we have the play and write modes just like the original. And then we've got more controls. The first one I think could have been done quite a lot better, but I understand that this is exactly how the devilfish works. So you can adjust the slide time. In order to demonstrate this, the best thing to do, I think, would be just to program a long slide. I'll program the pitches in and I'll go from the lowest possible pitch to the highest possible pitch. Now you can hear it. Let's adjust the slide time. This is with the minimum and with the maximum. It's a fast slide and full. You can hear it does take longer. That is quite obvious. I find it really difficult to hear when you don't do such extreme slides. If you're doing like a normal acid pattern, 
or all around one or two octaves you can't really hear what that does normally I just leave it in the middle now the next two controls are for the accent we'll deal with the second switch first which is labeled accent sweep and it's got three settings the top one is normal <laughs> Now, the other two modes are called uh, high resonance modes. So when I switch down into the middle position, you'll hear the resonance go up a lot. Now, that's a little too much for my taste. I'm sure some people would like it. Just squeals a little too much for me. Um, I don't know. You tell me. Do you like that? That's the middle position of the accent sweep, and then the bottom position is high resonance, but without any frequency sweeping, and you'll hear that now. Those accents are screaming less. That is um, self-oscillating for sure. Let me turn off the VCO, then you hear it. That's just the filter in the middle position of the accent sweep and in the lower one. The other switch here is called sweep speed. This is only active in the top and middle positions of the accent sweep switch. It works a bit like the decay, I suppose. That's fast. Normal. Slow. Normally I just leave that on normal and the accent sweep on two. The next one is filter FM. So this kind of works like a, a high frequency distortion. I quite like it. Uh, I'll bring it in gradually and you can hear what that filter FM is doing. You can hear it coming in. It adds like a certain glitchiness, which I think is quite cool. The last control is the muffler, which does something with the high-end response. According to the manual, it adds a little bit of extra clipping, but it also rolls off the high-end. In certain circumstances, I think it actually boosts the high-end a bit. So I think this is probably more active like in the upper mid-range. In any case, the muffler switch is very subtle. <laughs> I don't know, you can hear a, di a difference pretty easily, but I mean, it's not astonishing. I generally leave it on zero, but uh, your mileage may vary. There is quite a cool extra button that they've added, uh, which is on the Devilfish 2, I think, which makes every single note accented. I really like this for, like, builds. I think it's quite cool. So I'm going to press it. It's cool. There's a whole bunch of patch points. Filter in, filter FM in, filter CV in, accent slide and gate in, CV in, sync in. You can actually sync the MO to the original 303 using that. You can adapt it to sync 24. And you've also got outputs, which the original has as well. So you've got CV and gate out. So you've also got an extra accent out and a filter output.